adjusted. First of all, we must make sure we're sitting in the right position to be able to play. Sit facing the middle of the piano like this, with your feet opposite the pedals, and try to keep your back reasonably straight. Don't slump over the keyboard like this. It's worth bearing in mind that an adjustable piano stool is better than an ordinary chair because it means that people of different shapes and sizes can play in comfort. Your seat should be at a height which allows your lower arms to sit level with or just above the keys. Don't sit too high. You'll find it very difficult to play accurately and your arms will soon start to hurt. Try to wear something comfortable so that your arms are free and also don't let your nails get too long. I know it looks nice, but when you play for your friends, you don't want them to be concentrating on the tapping noise you're making. Quite often I see people sitting in very awkward positions to play the piano. If you sit too far away from the piano, like this, you'll find it really difficult to reach the higher or lower notes. And if you sit too close, like this, then you're restricting the movement in your arms and you'll also find it very difficult to play. Once you're sitting in the correct position, remember to relax. You need to be able to avoid tension, particularly here in your lower arms. This will become crucial later on when you attempt to play more complicated pieces. Hand position, position and particularly posture is very, very important to begin with. Um, although it won't seem so, it will become more relevant as time goes on. Um, particularly the height as well, the height you're sitting at, very, very important. Always make sure that the arm is level, um, certainly from a side view, it mustn't be up or down. It should have a good posture. Some of the defaults are um, not having your stool at the right height. Um, because then it, it, it means that your arms are not in the right position and um, if you're not sat in the middle of the piano um, that could also affect your playing and if you don't get a good technique to start with then that's a habit that you carry on and it just gets gradually worse. The important thing is to have your piano stool sort of quite low. Your hands should be really, really, really sort of level with the keyboard so you, you shouldn't be too high crouching over it. I mean, you watch a lot of great pianists and they'll be crouching over the piano. So, I mean, the classical te technique really is to sort of be playing from here, so almost your, hat, your arms are going up. Now, before we start to play, we need to learn about fingering. Fingering is a system developed to make sure your hands don't get tangled up in knots. This is how it works. Each finger is given a number. Your thumb is number one, index finger is number two, your middle finger becomes three, the next finger is number four, and your little finger becomes number five. You'll see these numbers over the notes in the music. They tell you which fingers to use for which notes. If you stick to these recommended fingerings for each piece, you'll soon get into the habit of having your hands in the right position. Next, we need to place our hands correctly on the piano. It's important to remember that your wrist shouldn't be floppy, so you can support your hands properly. Never allow your wrist to hang below the keyboard like this. Now, with your fingers sitting lightly above the keys, curl your finger slightly, as if you're holding a small balloon. Keep your hands rounded and light, or you'll pop the balloon and your hands will go flat and your wrists will get floppy. Your fingertips should cover the five notes next to each other in each hand. This is the normal finger position, which your hand should return to automatically. Uh, using the right fingering um, is important really just in terms of, particularly if you're playing fast scales and runs, um, and arpeggios really, I mean there's a, there's a whole sort of reason for using the right fingering, but it just makes it a lot easier to play complex runs um, more, more easily because if you're falling all over your fingers all over the place it just makes it more more difficult. The right fingering is very important especially for scale passages and although everybody hates learning to play scales, scales are very important for developing a good technique. The right fingering I think is crucial and I think um, one of the reasons being is 
later on in life, you will hopefully be playing faster, more difficult passages. That's where if you haven't got the right fingering, you can find problems. Um, we usually say, I think people can get tongue tied if they're speaking quickly or not elocuting their words properly. Well, you can almost get finger tied by doing the same thing. The reason being is that if you're trying to play a fast passage and your fingers aren't properly prepared, they're not over the keys you're going to play, then they'll be leaping to that key to try and find it and time. That obviously takes time, it slows you down, and it increases the chances of you playing a wrong note. So fingering is vitally important. Let's have a look at the piano itself. At first glance, the piano keyboard may seem confusing. There are loads of notes. It also looks really complicated. There are pedals and strings and hammers in here. But don't panic. Although your piano at home may look a lot different to the one I'm playing here, all pianos are constructed in roughly the same way. Inside the body of the piano, there's what looks like a harp. On this piano, it's lying down. But if you're playing an upright piano, it will be standing up. The thinner, shorter strings make the higher notes. This is the highest note on the piano. And the thicker, longer strings make the lower sounds. This is the lowest note. So as you can see, the range of notes available on the piano is huge. Unlike a harp though, we don't pluck these strings. Instead, there are things called hammers, which strike the strings when you press down a note, like this. This is why the piano is actually a percussion instrument and not a string instrument. Underneath your feet you'll find some pedals. Most standard pianos have two pedals, although the one I'm playing has three. The one on the right is the most common pedal used. This is called the damper pedal or sustain pedal. And if you press it while playing a note, it raises the dampers from the strings and allows the notes to be sustained. The left pedal is called the soft pedal and is used when you want to play at a lower volume. In music you may see the words una corda. This literally means one string and is an instruction to use the soft pedal. The middle pedal on this piano is actually called the sostenuto pedal and is less commonly used. Let's now look at all these notes. The keyboard is actually the same series of 12 notes repeated over and over for its entire length. Only seven letter names are used. The black keys are arranged in twos and threes in a repeating pattern. This is actually very useful because it lets you find your way around the piano. For example, a note to the left of a group of three black notes will always have the same letter name. We'll have a look at all the names of the notes in a bit, but first we need to look at...